spent most of the day riding back and forth on the dirt road that is the main street of Pahuska, uh, clinging to the back of an old car that had no kind of seat belts, handles, or anything. So this arm is sore. Oh, sorry. And I should know how to use a microphone. Anyway, I'll give you a short, brief history of Osage's. It'll sound very similar to his. <laughs> but um, we also came from the, uh, what we're finding out now, the East Coast, actually. It always used to be the Ohio Valley, but now, recently, the East Coast, which makes sense to me, since we are known as the children of the Middle Waters. As we came west, we went through the Mississippi Valley, traveled down those, controlled those rivers, and about in the 1700s, we uh, encountered the French traders. And uh, through the French traders, we were able to be the first ones to get guns. I know that sounds horrible, but that's the way it is. And that's how we were able to control the waterways so well. And also the fact that my ancestors were six and a half to seven feet tall. So to kind of get you to understand that, it, like, it would be like the NBA on horseback, you know? <laughs> They're coming to tell you, you're gonna go. Anyway, uh, we also used to own Arkansas, Missouri, and Kansas. Not the Delaware part. Okay. And of course, uh, ran out of there too through treaties and pressure till finally we're in Kansas and they want us out of there as well. But this time they pay us for it. So that's why we were able to buy our reservation here in Oklahoma. It's the whole county of Osage County, 1.1 million acres, and uh, oil was discovered on it uh, before 1900. And I'm not exactly sure how that was, if it was like an actual pool of oil or a sheen on the water. But uh, even the ancestors, if you believe in the supernatural, felt the ground and said there's something beneath the ground. But my elders get judgment, they're interpreters. You have to have good interpreters when you're working on all this stuff. And advisors. Got us to where we are today. And so I'm just grateful for that, where they put us. But as I always say to people that come to the museum, I work at the Osage Nation Museum, so if anybody wants to, you know, come visit me, that's fine. I'll be glad to answer your questions. That's what I do all day. They want us to, uh, and even at the museum, to demonstrate our uh, knowledge of uh, the making of our Native American clothes and things like that. And of course I do, but I'm not that great a seamstress, and uh, I never have been. My mother was a wonderful seamstress. My sisters are wonderful seamstresses. But uh, I like to write, and Osages have many famous writers, beginning with John Joseph Matthews, and uh, Carter Rivard, you know, both Rhodes Scholars, fantastic men. And John Joseph Matthews is the reason that we have a museum. So I look at his portrait every day and just say thank you, because it really does store the heart and soul of the Osage in those walls. And our museum, it's not just for non-Osages, it's for Osages. It's for them to come and see what's there so that they can be reminded. And, and it's all the, the oldest tribal museum in the United States. Now, uh, what I did for 15 years down in Norman, Oklahoma was lead poetry readings. I know you're probably going, oh no, poetry, but just bear with me. So this one is called Native Sovereignty 2020. Obviously, I wrote it last year. <laughs> Pandemic poetry, perhaps. All right, here we go. This slender web of legality, it shall become our only blanket. An ancient and strong weave, the many colors still bright through time, though time is flying. We wear it into the future fearlessly. As we observe their constitution, so must they recognize our sovereignty, as modern as a force field as ancient as our grandmother's tears. I can still see the brightness in her eyes. Her eyes. It's the reflection of our triumphs. 
Is sovereignty an art? One's generation's work telling the next generation what it was like? Is this their communication to us? Then it is strong and clear. Stand. And now I would like to introduce my beautiful youngest sister, Margaret Shannon Sisk, and she is going to discuss the beautiful clothes she is wearing. So please give her a round of applause. Hawaii, Dahe Ningsha, Umakhbadi, Wajaji Ina, Naomi. I said um, in my language, in the Osage language, I said um, hello, men and women who are seated. My name is uh, Naomi, and I'm from the Deer Clan. I also said wahbadi, which means I'm pitiful. Now, when I'm, when, I'm going to explain that to you. Um, when I was young, I always heard my uh, great uncle pray. He prayed at events that we would have family dinners and things, and uh, he said we're pitiful. He'd started out we're pitiful people, and I was young, and I thought I'm not pitiful. What? So 50 years later, I'm 57. I'm talking to my dad about two years ago. And I said, Dad, why did he say we're pitiful? And he said, well, there's two meanings. I was 55 and finally learned that there's two meanings to pitiful in the Osage language. One is where a man can't put food on the table. And two, only the creator knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's what my uncle meant. We're pitiful. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So that's in my introduction. My government name is Margaret Sisk, and my Wajaji name is Naomi. It means to live. It's from the Deer Clan. All, all growing up, I thought, what does that mean, to live? My sister's name in the Deer Clan is Doe a female deer, just like the song. My brother's name means, <laughs> my brother's name means uh, the uh, strength of the uh, legs of a buck, so strength. My dad's name means, it's Wakansia, and it means when the deer herd looks up, but before it runs and gets spooked, it's when the deer herd looks up, it's Wakansia. So, throughout my life, I thought, what does my name mean? And I never knew what that meant until four years ago when my daughter walked before us. And uh, I thought I need to learn to live. I need to learn to live without her. So, Osages get Osage names and they have meanings. And it might take a lifetime before you figure out what that is. Anyway, so let me tell you, and I'll describe my clothing to you. I'm wearing women's Osage clothes. And I would like to show you a shawl. This is a vintage shawl from my mother. And it's burgundy, one of my favorite colors. And uh, what I'm wearing today, um, I'm in the movie also. I'm a cast member of a very small part. Um, after I lost my daughter, I thought I would never dress and dance again in Osage clothes. And when they put these clothes on me for the movie, I put the blanket on, I felt like dancing. And I never thought I'd feel that way again. So I told my husband when, the first, when I get my first check, I'm gonna dress again because it's very expensive to dress in those of clothes. I made my shirt, my skirt, I bought, I bought the moccasins, I bought a yarn belt. It cost $1,200. This skirt, it cost uh, $400. My moccasins cost $300. I'm not married to a, a doctor or a lawyer, so it's very expensive. But um, 
I'm very happy that this movie is being made. It's called Killers of the Flower Moon. It's affected all Osage families. It affected our family. It affected my, my father's family and my mother's family. And my father's from uh, Hominy. And in talking to him, he's 86, he remembers those days and he said, um, we were lucky that they didn't come after us in Hominy. Although William Hale was in his grandpa's living room asking him questions and my great grandpa, Bob Morrell, kept saying, no, no. We don't know what he asked, but William Hale was in our family's home and, and that's scary because he was a, he was an organizer. He organized, he organized the banks, our superintendents, he organized to get money. It was greed. That's what the reign of terror was about. It was greed and organized crime was right over there in Pahuska, Oklahoma, believe it or not. But anyway, Killers of the Flower Moon is going to be uh, released, but, but it brought me, it brought me back into my Osage clothes and it brought me back to hearing stories about my grandmother and her dad and listening to stories from my father, and I'm very grateful. And I told, um, I work with the uh, four sisters in the movie, and they told Leonardo, because I said, the part that I'm playing, uh, I've, I've talked to my dad extensively, I'm a consultant on, on mourning, and I said, because of this movie, because he bought the rights in 2016. He outbid George Clooney because of him. I'm dancing again after losing my daughter. Never thought I would do that. So I wanted to thank him for that. And she did, and she thanked him, and he was, he was very gracious, of course. And, but when I met him, he plays a bad guy in the movie. He plays, he plays um, Molly Burkhardt's husband. He also helped organize a murder. But when I met Leonardo DiCaprio, I said, Ernest, that's his name in the movie, I don't know if I can talk to you right now. I'm a little mad at you. And he just laughed. <laughs> and uh, I feel like that it's come full circles being asked to do this today, this evening. And, and to wear my Osage clothes again is, uh, it, it has brought me back my heart. Uh, it has brought me back my sanity. It has brought me back from the depth of mourning that I cannot express to you. But I also want to thank my beautiful sister, Susan, for asking me to come here tonight and show my Osage clothes. So thank you, Susan. I love you so much. Now I'm going to dance. And uh, yes, I'm a, I, I danced classical ballet until I was 32 but I'm going to dance um, the Osage style of dancing for women, and I'm going to turn on some music right now. And to describe our way of dancing, it's, it's a slow walk, but you'll get to listen to our beautiful music.
And those were our war dance songs. Um, and what I did when I was dancing, when I bent over like this, I'm looking for tracks. I'm looking for animal tracks. So I turn this way, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking. Okay. And that's part of, um, part of our style of dancing. Um, Osages are known to, uh, as Southern Cloth. The cloth that I'm wearing is trade cloth, and it's called, or we call it broad cloth. And uh, I wear uh, two sets of beads, chokers, earrings, and the pins that I wear, they just keep the, uh, the shirt closed. Now, um, many of you may have heard of a powwow, I'm not quite sure, but um, I'm sure you've heard of a rodeo. Well, there's a rodeo circuit where cowboys go from rodeo to rodeo and they win money. Well, you can do that with powwows too. There's a powwow in Oklahoma every single weekend and there's prize money. And when, uh, we'll say there's a category of Southern cloth, there will have um, prize money of like, we'll say $200 for the winner. But there are special things about my particular dress that you have to do in order to get points from the judges. And one of them deals with my belt. When I dance, it should swing almost elbow to elbow. And you need to know the music and you need to, you need to stop on time. When the, when the beat stops, you stop which I didn't do. <laughs> it's been a while. But um, I have a very special guest here tonight. She is an actress, and she is in Killers of the Flower Moon, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, and starring another guy named Robert De Niro, and a famous Academy Award winning director, and his name is Martin Scorsese. The actress, is Jumpy. She plays Rita, the sister of Molly. And sadly, Rita was murdered and she was blown up in the house. Her name is Janae Collins and I'd like to ask her to come up here. I love you. Please come up here. We're very happy to have her here. She's all the way from Los Angeles, California and she's our superstar. Can we do a little question and answer with you? Yeah. Let's come over here. You remember my sister Susan? Yeah. <laughs> Janae, can I ask you a few questions? Um, what tribe are you? I'm enrolled in the Fort Peck Assiniboine and Sioux tribes from Poplar, Montana, but I'm also Crow, both from Montana. And what is your, do you, you have a, your Indian name? Chanupa Yuhawia, which means woman who holds the pipe. That's beautiful. Oh, um, that's so beautiful. Uh, I'm gonna be in the, the bearing the pipe ceremony. That's, that's gonna be really sad. But anyway, oh, anyway, so let's get back. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming tonight. It's a very beautiful night and a wonderful night to watch Margaret dance. I've been so blessed to get to know her family and I've been here since about March, the end of March, and it's been quite the experience getting to know the Wajaji people and getting to understand the culture and the pain that they went through. And I'm kind of like nearing the end of my journey here and it's been absolutely amazing. Um, I have about three weeks left here before I head back to Los Angeles. I'm just about wrapped on Killers of the Flower Moon and it's been such a great experience and I'm so, so grateful to Margaret and her family. Yes, I, I love Bartlesville. It's, it's wonderful. I started out in Pahuska and um, Due to some security issues, we had to move to Bartlesville, the sisters and I. Um, and it, it's been really, really awesome. Like, the culture is so beautiful here. And just 
really getting to know the community and just doing the different kind of events that um, Killers of the Flower Moon production had scheduled for us in addition to us doing our own thing and just getting to know the different families in the community. It's been beautiful and I've been definitely enjoyed my time in Bartlesville. Have you uh, been to any powwows around here? Oh, okay. Okay. Just the um, Pahaska Lanshka, I got to go. Um, I wasn't able to make the Grey Horse or the Hominia Lanshka, um, but I did get to go to um, Margaret and Susan's ceremony for their naming of their grandchildren, and that was absolutely beautiful. So glad to be invited. I love these sisters. I love them both. They're wonderful. We love you too. So um, I'm not sure how much time we have left, but um, I did want to talk about um, the Killers of the Fire Moon and how do you feel about portraying uh, an Osage woman that's so historic? Wow, that it's definitely been um, such a learning experience and just it's really different when you're acting and you're portraying someone that lived, especially that was murdered in such a tragic way. And getting to know my character has been such a process because even finding out any information about her has been a little bit of a struggle because there's there's not a lot of information about my character in particular besides what's in the FBI files and what I found out I found out from the community. And it's it's been a struggle as far as like, you know, developing her and it's been such an honor and getting to watch the dynamics of the sisters like, like for these sisters for example has really really helped us because um, Jillian, Kara, Lily and I were all only children and getting to understand the dynamics between the sisters has been such a process for all of us and it's been so beautiful and watching these sisters as well as the, one of their other sisters has helped my process so much in understanding who I am in that sense as Rita. I know that watching the four of you together, you, uh, you sisters, I couldn't tell that you weren't sisters. <laughs> and you are very talented and I'm very grateful to know you. I'm grateful that you knew my daughter and um, I'm so happy that you're here and thank you for coming tonight. Um, Susan, did you have any questions? Susan was a journalist, by the way. Susan, do you have any questions? You, well, first of all, who inspired you to take up acting? That's a tough one. Um, I was inspired when I was a child, but growing up in Poplar, Montana, on the Fort Peck Assiniboine and Sioux Reservation, um, it wasn't really a reality that acting could be something that I could pursue. And I'd have to say it's a combination of my grandma, my mother and my partner that inspire me as far as like what's gotten me going, what keeps me going every day as far as like, because before I got this role, it, it's difficult in Los Angeles and getting, kind of just keeping that momentum is, is tough at times. So um, my partner Brian, who's also with me tonight, um, he's inspired me so much just to keep going at times. And my mother has been the biggest driving force as far as acting and like telling me to pursue my passions and my dreams. And I have to say my father too, probably, because he's a stuntman. And he kind of showed, he paved the way for me personally to show me that I could do it. Oh, I don't know if I have any other questions, but uh, where did you get your training? I began my training at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, and that's where I kind of got the foundation of acting as far as theatrical stuff. Um, and then from that point, I moved to Los Angeles and I've trained um, at the Upright Citizens Brigade, which is Amy Poehler's school um, of comedy. <laughs> so I was, I was, I was definitely um, more interested in going, going into comedy, but I tend to get booked more for drama. <laughs> So um, I know you've, you've met everybody in the cast, um, almost everyone. Oh, you haven't, okay. Oh, even I've met him. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, so, um, so working with Martin Scorsese, is he one of your favorite directors? 
Yes, Marty's absolutely one of my favorite directors. He's an amazing person, an amazing artist, and a beyond amazing, amazing director. He's legendary, and his projects are just, they're so inspiring. Just, I mean, even before I got cast in this, some of the stuff he's done is just awe-inspiring. Thank you for coming, and I can't believe you're here with me. Everybody give her a big round of applause. I know that we're going to set up here, we're going to put the tables back up here, and um, if you'd like, you can have a picture taken with Janae Collins from the movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you all. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Loud Car. <clears throat> Since she talked about her clothes, her Indian clothes, I'm going to read a poem, and it's called All Indian Clothes Are Ghost Dance Shirts. And I don't know if you know what ghost dance shirts were, but they were believed by the natives that wore them that it made them invincible. Uh, and I really believe that was, you know, a direct result of an ongoing genocide by that time. Anyway, fringe of my shawl. It swings rhythmically to the drum. We all sway together, we women. The men are on their own hunt around the drum, straight dancers, dancing as they look for tracks of animals long since lost to history. It still lives in the powwow. Fancy dancers, traditional dancers, grass dancers are all looking for the best spot to dance, to track. They make their own space as they twirl, jump, and sneak up. 